Were you in the practice with the um, the Charmin? Were you in Soft that practice? Charmin practice? Yeah. I wasn't in the practice. Okay, okay. But, but you was there that day? Yeah. What, what, like, bro? We don't get one Kobe story explained. We gotta, we gotta get to the bottom of how this shit happened. I was a rookie. It was like a testing day for Kobe to test, like, Jeremy Lin, test me, and test, like, Wesley Johnson and other guys. He's still, he's just trying to figure out who does what. Yeah, we know what he's capable of. Like, we all know what he can do. So he's trying to figure out how to play with one another, and everybody needs to just figure it out each other out and Kobe didn't really practice with us you know what I mean he would come to games but you know obviously at his age he couldn't put that kind of mileage on his body I wouldn't allow him to practice much but there were days where he was like well B, B let me just scrimmage and I was like yeah that, that sounds good so you know we're going to scrimmage at about this time come on back out you know get yourself back loose and I'm going to let you scrimmage and Kobe was like you know I'm a, I can outwork every one of these motherfuckers I was, I was like, Boos, watch me today in practice. All right. And he would be in the scrimmage talking. From the start, he was killing Jeremy Lin. Like, I guess he wanted Jeremy Lin to be something he wasn't. That was a dark year, man. That was that was a really, really dark year. Welcome to one of the greatest Kobe Bryant stories that has ever been told. And this is brought to you by the NBA players that were involved on this day. We rewind back to late 2014 in a scrimmage where Kobe Bryant went in on his teammates and they talk about it. Each player from the scrimmage talks about what happened on this famous day. This story is hilarious, crazy, and very Kobe Bryant. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so I will say if you enjoy the video by the end of it, I'd really appreciate if you guys could help me out by hitting that like button and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed and want more. All footage, interviews, clips, and podcasts that were used in this video is on the screen right now, so be sure to watch them in their entireties. And without further ado, welcome to the craziest Kobe Bryant story told by his teammates. He was killing from the start of the practice. I don't know why we got him. Why is he here? Um, he had one good year talking crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, but during the practice, I'm up here like Jeremy Lin. Come on, man. You can't let you can't go out like this. We ain't going out like this. Good. Not today. Today is ain't that day, baby. At that time, he was coming back from injuries, and then he was also going through some injuries. But he was like. He, you know, he was like 35 year old Kobe with a 25 year old Kobe mind. And so like, mm -hmm. he, had, he had it in him that he wanted to prove to the world, like all the reporters who say he couldn't come back from his Achilles or other injuries. Like he had this like, hurt, like intense level of like, I'm gonna prove you wrong. And I would sit there sometimes and say, guys, you not gonna say nothing back? <laughs> you know, that would be me. I'm sitting right. there like, no, no, I don't care how good, you, you yeah. not gonna talk to me. Right. If I was out there on the court that way. But Jeremy Dane was getting killed. He was getting ripped and shit by Mark Price. Mark, not Mark, fucking Ronnie Price. Ronnie yeah, Price. Ron, oh, Ron Ronnie Price. Uh, he played defense, yeah. full court. Ronnie Price has, you know, been the one guy that I, you know, can look at and say, wow, this guy's really gotten my attention. I, I always like Ronnie Price's de defensive tenacity. I always like the way he played. I mean, he always played really hard. Defensively, he's a he's a little bit of a pit bull. He just gets after people, and you got to love that about him. Ron, Ronnie, uh, he played defense, full yeah. court, picking them up. I'm mm -hmm. getting mad. Like, German, then come on, man. That's when I was like, all right, Cole, you talking too much. You can't guard me. Guard, stop guard me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he just going back and forth, and I hear Nick, you can't guard me. Like, oh, you can't guard me, nigga. <laughs> All that, right? <laughs> he was guarding Jeremy Lin, guard me. Oh. Yeah, guard me. <laughs> hey, no that part. Yeah, guard me. And then we start going back and forth. So I just hear the back and forth, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
First day I ever seen Nick stick up from himself for himself was uh that day. Oh, when that got caught on camera, the one he said nobody in the world could guard me. Oh yeah, nobody can guard me. I was like, I said nobody in the world could guard me because Gil was where teaching me. From. Yeah, Gil was teaching me, you know, the confidence you gotta go at him. So I was going at him, and then Kobe said a line like, "Lucky I'm not from this world," something like that. What that mean? Because I said nobody in the world could go. Oh, so you said like, lucky I'm not from this world. Damn, he <laughs> good, so, bro. He too yeah, quick. Like, so we going back and forth. It was fun. And then all I remember is like, I'm like, man, what's going on? Like my first year in the NBA was a shock, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing everything, <laughs> right? So I'm like, man, what's going on? So I'm in the <laughs> training room. I'm getting my my rehab and stuff. And all I hear is. Soft as Charmin, y'all motherfuckers trash. Yeah. Like, just going crazy. Kobe, y'all soft like Sherman. You know, Kobe got a deep ass voice, so like, you hear it. And uh, all I hear is what uh, Mitch was like, or Mitch Kupchak was our GM at the time, and Cole leaving of court. And he like, Mitch, I'm supposed to get better with this shit. I'm supposed to be get better with this shit. Uh, the gym was full of you know young players and some veterans yesterday morning. And when he showed up, you know the whole tenor of the gym changed a little bit. It's like, you know, look who's here. <laughs> and then he walk in the locker room. He like, Jew, what the fuck is this, Jew? What the fuck? He's like, I'm supposed to practice? Oh, I can't even get better practicing with y'all. He's like, these motherfuckers making me worse. <laughs> 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 and he just walked out, bro. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that happened after that, though. Yeah. That you don't know. Yeah. yeah. In the locker room. Yeah. It got real crazy in there, man. What happened to JT? <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about you. What Jay Lane, you said? <laughs> I forgot yeah. about all that. That's crazy. I was like, I told him, this is how it started. I said, look, you're you're Kobe. Like, I'm coming in trying to learn from you, okay? So, like, I'm okay with anything as long as you talk to me like, like a man. Like, in terms of, like, don't talk down to me like I'm a boy. Talk to me like a man and respect me. And then, you know, he has always said, like, you know, everybody just says what I want them to say. Like, it's very rare that somebody actually stands up to me. We didn't speak for the last four months of the season. Like, nobody knew, nobody on the team knew. But for me, that was like something I was willing to accept because I said what I needed to say to him. And if he didn't like that and he didn't, and he was like, I'm not gonna engage in, or like, I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. I was like, all right, cool. I can, I can live with that. At least I said what I needed to say. I'm like, damn. I'm saying this. I'm like, damn. Yeah, like, what you say? Everybody, that, you, you know what say? He just... dapped me up. I'm like, yeah, they make you worse, Cole. Yeah, they make you, <laughs> <making> you worse. <laughs> and everybody just, you know, slow by one by one. Everybody slow walking to the locker room. Yeah. But my leg was broke. So I wasn't soft that day. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> and then the next day, you know, he, he won and won the game. Played his first good game here as a San Antonio rookie. Brian, Brian, fire, nothing but net. Nick Young doesn't hesitate, and Nick hits the three. Young fires it up again. He's feeling it. He's got the range on his first two. Crowded key. On to Young. He's got it again. Had himself a start, so has Nick Young is red hot. But lucky I was coming off the bench, so I, I had my whole unit. But yeah, I yeah, yeah. Him, I, I do my role. So it was the bench that provided those threes. Nick Young knocking down five of those in the first half. Wait a second, DZ. Didn't Kobe call out Jeremy Lin and Nick Young at Thursday's practice? Yeah, they called him soft and charming or something, right? But right now, they're playing tough right now, and Kobe to the rim. <laughs> Were there any points where you took a shot and you was like, this is a bad shot, but fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Nick 
Young. Hit by Boozer. Young following over. Diaw! Got to shoot. And got give two. it to Kobe. And one. Bryant to get the clock! To beat the clock! Once a game, anyhow, so let me throw it up in. Ooh, throw it in. I love the when you waved them off. I think it was against the Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that, that was the game. That was right after that. Oh, it that was. That was right after that. But look, look, Kobe's gonna ask for the ball. Swaggy's like, 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 I got this. Swaggy's 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 like, I got this. That's so funny. You forgot, you're like, oh, my favorite player isn't Kobe, it's me. And you <laughs> four feet behind the line. Let it rain. Yes. I'm like, damn, I didn't know I shot that. that shot you watching film? Yeah, like, damn, why did I shoot that? But he's been doing that seemingly all game long, especially in the first half. Now he's back to being swaggy. I thought I was open. <laughs> so I would know how I shot that. That's fantastic. Boy, was that a hard fought escape. In that in the interview, about? I said, <laughs> but I, I said feel something like... about the Sherman tissue or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, from the yesterday practice, you know, Kobe talking all that trash kind of uh, inspired me today. I thought we I thought we played pretty hard for a team full of toilet paper. I thought that was pretty good. So uh <laughs> <laughs> It seemed like Kobe, as for someone who was so serious, and for yeah. you Nick, obviously you know you love having fun. He took a liking to you. I don't know what it was, but he really vibed with you. Yeah. Like, dude. I've never, can we That's play That's better the, than one, like running an MVP. <laughs> right. I swear to God, to get Kobe to give you that? My, For sure. My favorite game with you is we got the it. Spurs game. The one you hit the game winner. <laughs> I want to play some of the clips because I want everyone to watch Kobe, the first clip that we got. Let's watch this. This is, what is going through your head right here? Uh, this, no, but watch Kobe. Watch Kobe the whole time. I have never seen Kobe do this in my life. Okay? He kind of had to because he just yeah. cussed us out the day before. And then, and then, wait, 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 that's when he called us soft he, like tissue and this, all that. This, this, <laughs> so look at this one that. too, though. Look at this one too. <laughs> but how are you? You went, you got Kobe to go from I've never you seen soft it. as tissue to doing your own yeah. celebration? What did Kobe say after you got a little hop in? Uh, he's, he was feeling the swag too, I feel. Yeah, he was. Uh, he, he was a different Kobe today. He was animated, talking, you know, um, talking trash, doing swaggy P3s. What what do you point that to? Like, is there anything you can kind of? How um, did you guys hit it off? Yeah, just for me, like, just never backing down from whatever he was in practice, always, and even just showing up to practice, coming to work out with him. He he had a lot of respect for guys who busted their butts, you know, every single day. Being that they were very talented or not, but if you came to work every single day and you didn't bag down to him because he would test you. You know, that's the one thing I loved about it. He would right. test guys in practice. How would he test them? Oh, elbowing them, uh, talking to them, you know, telling them they can't guard him. You know, you got this guy out here and this guy can't hold my jock. You know, but I mean, he would talk so much stuff it, it, and he would really just to see how you're going to react to it. I got showed no sign of weakness of being afraid to play basketball and with anybody. So I think he liked the, the competition I, I brung, like, when we playing one on ones or just talking trash, and, yeah, yeah, you like that type. Those of guys stuff. always yeah. like every every like intense person like that always respect like that you yeah. know soften up. And yeah. then I feel like you know you being the fun guy you are, you kind of brought like the little bit of joy I did and like you're like the, so it was like this fun competitive little brother big brother yeah. thing going on. So, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's what's up, man. You're getting a lot of credit on Twitter and in social media for um, lighting a fire under the guys yesterday. The result is they played the, as a team the best game of the season. You think what you did yesterday worked? I, I, you know, look. I mean, we can all criticize my style of leadership all day long. I mean, we really can. You can sit there and it's uncomfortable. It's uh, you know whatever you want to say. But you know, I've been doing that since high school, and uh, you know we play this game to win championships, and I have five of them. And, right, but I think it worked. Do you feel like what you did yesterday had something to do with the way they played tonight? It, it, it's, it's, it's worked pretty well for me throughout my career. I mean, I, <laughs> I've done all right with that. I asked him, I said, man, why are you such an asshole? 
how did you deal with the players that you played with, you know, knowing that they, they were still kind of somewhere on the spectrum, but, uh, but you, were, you were on the top of it? I asked him that. He said, you really want to know? You know how he was. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he said, Phil, man. My response might sound a little tough, but I, I, I just, I kill him, I bury him. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, you know, tolerance for that and the kind of culture that the Laker organization stood for winning championships is not tolerated. Some of my teammates don't understand the work. But if you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with you. You don't make me feel dumber. You know, <laughs> you know you're going to lower my level. I don't think so. You can go over there. <laughs> There's plenty of teams in here where you'll fit right in. He says, so I see dudes walk into practice 10 minutes before practice and they leave right after. Why the fuck am I going to pass them the basketball? He'll tell me on the plane, like, this is my gift and my curse. If I feel like the other players on the court with me ain't really playing as hard as me, I'm not passing. I'm taking on the entire team by myself. You're going to show up to play and you're going to lollygag through this scrimmage, through this drill. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to let you know I beat you. I'm going to want you to reconsider your professional life choice. I don't respect your work ethic. People will say, okay, that doesn't make a great teammate. Well, I'm not here to be a great teammate. I'm here to help you win championships. I want to say it's almost like a prison mentality when it comes to like, he's going to test your manhood almost in a way that like, he's going to, he's going to push you and see where your heart is at. You know, and, and if you, if you come in and you, you act like a little punk and you don't, you, you punk out, then mm. he's not going to, he's not going to mess with you. He would talk so much stuff it, it, and he would really just to see how you're going to react to it. He's going to test you and definitely push you in practice. Is it intimidating? Um, you know, I, now that I've seen it, I definitely know where, how his mind, his right. mindset is. But before I was like, damn, tell him how you really feel. Wow. You know? I'm in here busting my ass every day trying to perfect my craft and these dudes these dudes don't want to work on their game I don't trust them so I'm not going to pass them the basketball I'm going to ride them hard every day made perfect sense when he really broke it down as to why he is the way he is with certain dudes I was just like man, I respect that bro so for me I have nothing but positives no negatives at all um, towards him as a teammate and especially, actually, we all called him OG. All of us younger guys, as rookies, and that we, you know, OG. And so, I have no negatives about the OG. He took us under his wing, and he taught us things, you know, bigger than basketball. And so, for that, I'm grateful. And you know, I, I don't have the stories that others have, but I can see where they probably come from, though. And he would do it to just see which of these guys he could be in that foxhole with. You know, which of these guys I can uh -huh. trust to have my back when I'm on the court? It was a with. test. It's a test. Yeah. And he was always, you know, you know, testing guys to in that way to try, try to find out, you know, which of these guys I can trust and, and go to battle with. But you know, a lot of it has made like the virality of certain clips of like him yelling at me, Nick Young and Jay Hill, you know, in practice. Yeah, that was that was a day for sure. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please help me out by hitting that like button, subscribe if you are new, and here are two new videos I think that you will also enjoy if you enjoyed this one. Take care.